All right, everybody, let me see you put your put hands, hands together. together. Like when you learn, you learn you're entertained. And when you learn, you're entertained. And when you learn, you learn. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> We're in the moon on the moon, and we're in the sky on the moon. As a crew, we pursue the new and the new. As every share, we compare points. Oh, sorry, sorry. All right, everybody, let me see you put your hands together. If when you learn, you're entertained, and when you're entertained, you learn. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> To the O, to the C. We're in the mood, oh, mood. In Wiz IQ, as a crew, we pursue, renew, and review. Everywhere we share and compare points of view. In Wiz IQ, there's so much we can do. We're open source. As a group, we pack force. The loop is all we are. Wherever we are, near and far, we align to learn. We yearn to connect. Our intellects intersect, reflect, and inject. Much love into our projects with mutual respect. To our prospects, we yearn to connect. Our intellects intersect, reflect, and inject. Much love into our projects with mutual respect. There's no limit to our prospects. We're in the mood, oh, mood. In Wiz IQ, as a crew, we pursue, renew, and review. Everywhere we share and compare points of view. In Wiz IQ, there's so much we can do. We're in the mood, oh, mood. In Wiz IQ, as a crew, we pursue, renew, and review. Everywhere we share and compare points of view in Wiz IQ, there's so much we can do. For a massive class to have class and be a blast, that has to surpass this other class of flukes they call moops. Don't conceal the real deal's the seal. We gotta socially engage on the world stage. For a massive class to have class and be a blast, that has to surpass this other class of flukes they call moops. Don't conceal the real deal's the seal. We gotta socially engage on the world stage. Do it with me now. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Come on. Socially engage on the world stage. Socially engage on the world stage. M to the O to the D L E. M to the O to the O to the C. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> That's the Moodle Moop. Wow. Great. Wow. Thank you so much. Uh, it's amazing to hear praise from Dr. Nelly because for me and showed me, guided me, especially here in Wiz IQ, uh, where there's so much we can do. And uh, the video, uh, Brian uh, and anyone else, uh, there is actually not a video, proper video for that uh, song. I still need to make that. That's on my list. Got a long list, <laughs> but there is uh, a video I guess I made with the words, right? I think uh, Dr. Nelly has the link for that, uh, or it's actually a video she made, I believe. But anyway, yeah, you can check that out later. Uh, I'm glad you like the lyrics, Dr. Nelly and others. Uh, the, my favorite part of that song, I think, especially for what I want to talk about today, is the part where it says, where I say, for a massive class to have class and be a blast, it has to surpass the other class of mooks, the flukes they call mooks. <laughs> so what I'm talking about when a mook is a fluke, I mean, you hear a lot of criticism of mooks that I believe is well-deserved. I want to talk about that today. I don't think that means every mook has to be like that. 
I think that what Nelly does with MOOCs is not like that. What I'm trying to do with MOOCs is not like that. And as Nelly mentioned, I started a MOOC for English language teachers for their professional development called ELT Techniques. Currently, I'm running a MOOC for teachers of any subject who are interested in teaching online or have started teaching online but need more uh, advice, suggestions, tricks, techniques. So the name of this MOOC is Teachers Teaching Online, and I want to talk about it today and also uh, talk about uh, how building a MOOC in WizIQ is becoming a very easy thing, a very rewarding thing, and also what I just mentioned, how there are different types of MOOCs and the sort of MOOC, uh, a more connectivist MOOC, and how what uh, Nelly's doing with that and what I'm doing with that, how I believe strongly in the future of this, uh, in this uh, uh, way of, of doing massive open online courses. No one's going to leave Dr. Nelly. I don't want anyone leaving me to you. Everyone can do it all. <laughs> I know she's kidding because she's presenting in Teachers Teaching Online just like I'm here presenting in hers. Um, what I'd like to do, Dr. N, is uh, play a video just to introduce the course. It's uh, in the media player. I can do it, you can do it, but I don't want us both to try to do it. <laughs> so uh, I don't know if you want to play that video. Maybe it's easier. Then uh, I do it. OK, just don't start it. Because if you start it and I start it, we'll be in trouble. So I'll play it. This is just a little introduction video. There's so much we can do in There's so much we can do in WizIQ. Greetings, everyone. My name is Jason R. Levine, Jace for short. I'm ambassador and knowledge entertainer at WizIQ. I'm pleased to announce a brand new MOOC I've created, a free massive open online course called Teachers Teaching Online. This course will show you what you need to know and what you need to do to become a successful online teacher. I'll be your host for this course where you'll meet and interact with a diverse group of exceptional online teachers. During each class session, we'll watch a different teacher in action in the virtual classrooms in WizIQ. These teachers will be demonstrating the tools and techniques they use to engage their students as well as sharing valuable knowledge of their experience. This free course is for all teachers interested in getting started in this fast-growing field in our profession. It's also for those of you currently teaching online who wish to further develop your skills, whether you teach independently, with an institution, public school, private school, big groups, small groups, private lessons, any configuration. To do this course, you do not need to download any software or have any special knowledge of computers or technology. All you need is an internet connection. During our four weeks together, we'll be covering many different topics, including creating courses, managing class discussions, assessing students, marketing your courses, using media in the online classroom, and much more. And after each class, we'll have a discussion on the class page where you can ask questions and we can all share information. Teachers Teaching Online begins soon, so find out more about it on the course page and enroll today to build and grow your presence as a teacher online. See you there. Peace and much respect. Teachers and students, I've got a message for you. There's so much we can do in WizIQ. So <clears throat> that just introduces the course. We started, as you can see, June 15th, but it doesn't matter when you enroll. I'm going to give you the link to the course. If anyone's interested, you can check that out. So we started on June 15th, and I want to talk a bit about the way I've conceived of this course being something like what Nelly's doing, where there are live classes, but you can also watch the recordings later. So the quality of the recordings is very important and the ease with which teachers can do the course at their own pace is very, very important to me. We don't want to have this window of just a month 
where people who are there at that time can get a good experience. We want people to be able to go in after, you know, during, but also after we finish with the live classes, which will be July 12th, uh, and still have a good experience. So I want to explain how some of the things I'm trying to do to make that work. And here's one of them, <laughs> how, how to make MOOCs actually succeed in the sense that people who join them enjoy them and finish them. Now, finishing them arguably is not, does not have to be you know, such uh, an important variable that we put, maybe we emphasize too much the importance of finishing it. What about what people get out of it even if they don't finish it? Does everybody need to? complete it or get some kind of certification? Um, I don't think so, but if we're not sure exactly uh, how, uh, yeah, it's a process that counts. That's exactly what I'm thinking. On the other hand, uh, I think there are reasons that can be, are very important to think about um, as far as uh, why some people do uh, opt out of MOOCs or don't finish them. So. Yeah, what does finish mean? Okay, so maybe I shouldn't say finish them as much as do not participate so much in them uh, and or do not uh, complete assignments or uh, get certificates at the end. What, any, are there any reasons you can think of? And definitely one of them is the process that counts. But I'm thinking more about people who have a negative experience. Too, too many tasks. They're busy with life and work. Good. Any other ideas? And oh, and too many MOOCs too, yeah. <laughs> that's a good that's a good reason. And Brian's point about MOOCs for CPD, I mean, you don't have to necessarily finish them. You could join a bunch of them, get some uh, good tips for your professional development, and, and, and not uh, engage so much, because, but, but not have a negative experience. Um, but yes, what Nevis is saying, this is a chore rather than a learning experience. This is the, the point uh, that I think about all the time. And one of the reasons it can feel like a chore is the MOOCs are not socially engaging. So what I love about what Dr. Nelly does, and I learned a lot from her in this regard, um, as well as others, especially people in social media environments like Facebook, where I work a lot with Sylvia Gaina, whom some of you may know, and others, how to make them highly engaging uh, socially so that students want to go back. I mean, we know why Facebook is so popular and Twitter, it gets kind of addictive, right? You just want to go back and back and back. Uh, and that's because of, well, there, we don't need to go, go into all of the reasons. But one of the reasons certainly is the high level of social engagement. And since we are social animals, yes, it can be addictive. Uh, and that could be a positive or a negative thing. On the learning side of Facebook, and the learning side of Twitter, and the learning side of what we're doing here, if it's addictive, I think for professional development purposes, nothing could be better. If you're playing Mafia Wars or Farmville or uh, uploading selfies all day of you and your puppy dog, then that might be different. And here's another one, which was mentioned times. When I did the ELT techniques move, for English language teachers, um, socially we were great. Everyone loved um, how how well things went as far as engagement among the participants with the presenters. Perfect. Of course, things could be improved upon, especially just logistics of it and navigation of it and so forth, uh, because it was kind of an explosion of social <laughs> connecting going on. Uh, and then there are limits of technology and and so forth. But one way that it failed, I felt, uh, was that 
there was just too much we were asking. And it's not that what we were asking was so stressful or so demanding as far as if you compare it to a course you take at a college or graduate school, nothing like that. But it's different, isn't it? As you're saying, you know, this is online, people have lives doing many other things, and they may want to, they may like the idea of taking a course with lots of assignments and lots of responsibilities to watch this and respond to that. But especially if it's interesting to them. But if they don't have time, even if it's interesting, or, and this is important too, maybe especially if it's interesting, but they can't keep up with it, this kind of cognitive dissonance is too much, right? It's overwhelming, and people will opt out. So this time around, I wanted to make it super duper inclusive, uh, not just for English language teachers, and also to really make sure people stayed with it. And one reason I felt they weren't staying with it before was, like I said, too much time and effort required of participants. So this is a good image of what we don't want. And there are MOOCs out there that are really taking this experience and putting it online. I won't mention any names. But it's not the Moodle MOOC or TTO, Teachers Teaching Online. Not much going on socially between these people here. And certainly looks like too much work. We don't want this feeling. <laughs> that does not look like a happy learning experience. And it can look like this even, too, can't it? Especially if there's a, uh, an issue with just how much is there and how long it would actually take to finish all of that material. Because like I said, what we're trying to do with this MOOC is make it possible for students to enjoy any time and learn at their own pace. But if there's too much there, then their own pace could turn into something like this. And we don't want that. So uh, I'd like to show you quickly is just what we're doing in the MOOC. And if you're interested, you can go and check it out for yourself. So I'm not going to spend so much time talking about what it's like. You can see. But just to underscore this point I'm making about how to make it socially engaging and very simple uh, in terms of how uh, expectations we have and the amount of work we expect. Because I feel like if, well, if we're doing it, in this case, what I'm hoping, and we just started, as you can see, uh, that by making suggestions of ways that participants can work together, collaborate, do activities uh, with each other, as opposed to uh, making assignments mandatory, that we can promote more of this type of work. So um, we carry a light workload. Certificates we uh, are awarding for attending or watching four or more classes. We have 22 classes, so that's not so many. Joining discussions on class pages. We're keeping track of who's there and if they're leaving answers to questions and are they providing feedback to their peers. And then this time, something I haven't done before. And I just started, but I kind of like it. And the uh, participants seem to like it. Taking short quizzes to check understanding of material. WizIQ has a really great newly uh, refurbished testing and assessment system makes it really easy to for teachers to create uh, quizzes and for students to take them. I prefer the word quiz to test. And these quizzes, I didn't explain the reason, my main reason for wanting them to participate, but many people got it right away. And that is they're saying, I like this quiz because it forces me to go back to the recording and really watch it and <laughs> try to find the answer. So that's wonderful, because that's exactly what I wanted from the quiz, not something to stress anybody out or for people to worry about their score, but a way to help motivate uh, participants to watch the recordings and, and, as a result, remember, retain more of the material that's there. Can you think of a metaphor here? 
Maybe you've seen something like this on Facebook. Or any impressions you have. You don't have to think of a metaphor. That's a pretty challenging uh, question. You don't have to come up with a metaphor. <laughs> a little goes a long way. Drop by drop, the bucket is filled. Moment by moment, awareness is developed. Ooh, fantastic. Did you just come up with that, Dr. Aaron? Or is that... Is that <laughs> Ah, and if you were at the opening ceremony at TTO, I see there are people here from TTO, excellent. Then you know I've already talked about this. It's a Chinese proverb, okay. I know one similar to that, but not the way you would. An ocean of learning. I guess Anna is here from TTO. Well, as you can see there, let me get my handy dandy pointer. As you can see, there's a drop there and the ripples that are moving out. And so one, not metaphor, more of a proverb, right? One drop has a ripple effect. Individually, we are one drop. Together, we are an ocean. Do you know this one? And if you do or if you don't, what, what does it mean to you? And especially in the context of a MOOC, a massive open online course like the Moodle MOOC or teachers teaching online. What about those ripples? What about that volume of water? Buddhist idea, sharing and learning together. A step towards constructivism, very nice. So yeah, const constructive learning, social learning, kind of an obvious thing to all of us now in this age of social social media and social learning or maybe most obvious to people like us who are here experiencing it ourselves it's not cheating to collaborate i like that ah and the effect yes yeah, shelly shelly sanchez terrell was in the little MOOC and in teacher teaching online talking a lot about this right there are more there are more people uh, that we're influencing as teachers online way more, exponentially more than we do in the physical classroom, right? And it can be transformative, as Dr. Nelly was saying. Well, when I got onto Facebook, YouTube uh, several years ago and experienced this amazing feeling of not be no longer being just a drop at my particular school, wherever I was, but forming this ocean with others in personal learning networks, or as Shelley was saying, um, passionate learning networks. I like that. There's also peer learning networks. But yeah, I was immediately. It was take me to the ocean. <laughs> I don't want to go anywhere else. I got I got to teach and learn in this ocean and this idea, this metaphor of the ocean was actually something that I started talking about and so with a few others in my network and saying uh, take me to the ocean from the from the uh, the proverb together we are an ocean and we started talking about to the ocean we go and then we started saying TTO we go and so there are some people in my network that understand what that means. TTO, here we go, to the ocean, here we go, working together, collaborating. And the interesting thing about TTO, here we go, which I've been sharing and using on Facebook for the last couple of years, is that when I went to think of a name for this MOOC, this was totally coincidental, or at least if it wasn't coincidental, subconscious decision. <laughs> I like teachers teaching online. I didn't think about TTO. I just thought teachers teaching online. I need a name that's very inclusive. Uh, the presenters are teachers who teach online. The students are teachers who either have just started teaching online or they're contemplating teaching online. And when I wrote it down, I looked at it and I said, oh my gosh, TTO. <laughs> TTO, to the ocean. So, whoa, I thought, this has got to be the name. <laughs> so, uh, that's what we are. We're TTO, here we go. Teachers teaching online. 
And here is a wonderful uh, image, or as they say at the WizIQ marketing uh, department, a creative, they call them. So I don't know if that's Indian English dialect or if that's a marketing dialect or both, but it's a creative. Thank you for those kind words, uh, everyone, in the chat box. But yeah, teachers teaching online, this is a, a tree, another metaphor here. Um, of the presenters we have, we have 19 present myself and Dr. Nelly Deutsch, whom you can see right here. I wish I could put a little star there. Don't have, don't have, uh, well, I guess I could, couldn't I? Where am I, where's the stars? Let's put one there. Hey, what happened? Give me my star. There we go. All right. <laughs> um, I'm not good with these icons. I'm just like, here we go. I have to take away the, the function there. Um, so uh, this is, this is uh, one of, I'll show you some others, one of the, uh, creatives made by the WizIQ marketing team to, to promote this MOOC. This was mentioned earlier, connected learning, the drops connecting to form the ocean. It's not about the presenters, number one, right? It's not about us, uh, these 19 people. It's about this picture. We have the tree with the 19 presenters, that's great, but we don't want to have a where it's this one direction thing, like the lecture, the lecture hall you saw before, right? Where you are just uh, receiving information from us. That's crazy. That's not what's going on in the world because of the internet. This is what's going on <laughs> right here. And to not tap into that, to not follow that, to work against that, or not take advantage of that would be insanity. So even if I, even if I didn't feel so excited about the direction learning is taking and teaching is taking, I'd be a fool to try to fight this, to go against it, because that's not the way things are. I'm not going to succeed. Which is why I think that you can be a, you can be traditional and against you know technology and you know all four textbooks written on paper and all of this stuff, it's fine, it's fine. But it's, it's not going to not change because of how people feel. It's, it's just something that's going to happen, that is happening. And if you're into socially constructed work, activism early, if, if you believe in this idea, you know, so whether it's you know, Montessori or Dewey or whoever, you know, when we bring the whole world together, then you know, that's really beguiling to me. It just kind of boggles my mind. And I think it's just people, you know, it's hard to, to embrace change and people sometimes have this knee-jerk reaction to the internet and technology, thinking that it's going to make us less social when it's so clear that that's not the case. And it's important to emphasize here, come back and emphasize all the time, I'm talking about learning through social networks and social media. I'm not saying it's a waste of time to use social, uh, social media for other things, say kind of you know, bold statements about how great uh, internet technology are. I'm really thinking about the learning possibilities here. So we could call it social learning, uh, social media learning, and then Anna is giving me an answer to the question? I don't know. This is a question I love to put out there. In the future, will it simply be called learning? What do you think I mean by that? Why would it be in the future just called learning? That it would be a misnomer to say social learning? Any ideas? Because I have it, all learning will be social. Already the word school sounds strange to me, doesn't it? To some of you, <laughs> the way that I, it might to others in the future. Online device will be normal. Definitely part of it will just be that you take it for granted. You know, using something online is like opening a book now. 
Lifelong learning, life is learning. Oh, that maybe where education is inadequate. Yeah, education, school, it sounds like something, well, sounds like what it is still, but in the future it probably won't be, which is something at a certain time and a certain place that you're limited by, by that. Who are we? How do we learn? Do we put ourselves in classrooms with, with books, those types of books? I'm not saying books are going to go away, but do we put ourselves in, in physical spaces confined with books because that was the best way to learn or because that was the most practical way to learn? And I'm talking about this without getting into the politics of education and the brainwashing or the whatever. But I'm talking about even the best case scenario, if you want to learn from someone, uh, a great teacher and great materials, you had to be in one place at one time pretty much. But who are we as social, as social beings, as human beings? We're social beings. So paradoxically, I think we are going back to our roots. Technology is bringing us, that is going to bring us more to who we really are as learners. And I know there have been great people talking about connectedism and connected learning and social learning in this MOOC. Bringing you back to TTO, true or false? It is too late now for teachers to join TTO. You know I have to do a little plug for the MOOC here. <laughs> true or false? Kind of a trick question because we started on June 15th. And it did say that we go to July 12th. But actually, those are the live sessions. And you can start at any time, watch the recordings of sessions from before, see the new ones live if you want, or maybe you never come live because you don't have time, so you watch the recordings only. That's what teachers will do who join after July 15th because we will always be free and open. So you can join anytime. And in the future, we'll do other months of new live classes. But you could join at any time and watch the recordings. I'm glad you understand because uh, it's not always clear. I don't always make this clear. And I'm trying now to make sure everybody understands. But finish when? There is no end date. So the, the MOOCs I did before did have end dates. And that was not what I really wanted. But it's what I did basically out of inexperience. So uh, there's an end date to the presentations. There is an end date to the presentations, but there is not an end date as far as getting a certificate, doing the assignments, etc. And part of what will make that easier is uh, a very simple, as I showed you, structure for assignments, right? So watching the last recordings, and we can monitor who watches them, or attend, so we can find out if you were there or you watched. Uh, who took quizzes? That's easy to, for us to monitor. And who participated in discussions on the class pages? So if it's a certificate you're looking for, it doesn't matter if you join us live or not. And if it's the content of the course, the recordings, and socializing, I'm going to keep that going too after the 15th or the 12th of July. And there will be more presentations in the future, exactly. So we'll do another. We will have this month long so people will know if you want to do it live, right? You want to be there during that month, but you know, oh, you know, if I can't, I'm still going to sign up because I want to check it out later. So my goal, we'll see if it works, is to have the course feed, the chats always buzzing for that particular move. It's never too late to join us. That's the answer. So false. <laughs> false. Yes, and Dr. Nelly has always done this. This is not some new idea. Uh, this is something that Nelly uh, does. And this is something that, you know, the X MOOCs in Coursera or edX or uh, Udacity, any of those, they, they are like that. But remember, they're based on pre-recorded videos. So it's easy to they're set up, not with uh, live sessions. So I'm, I'm trying to, you know, have the best of both worlds, have the live sessions, 
but also create something uh, that you can keep going on. The last ones I did really did not work like that. You can still get in there. You can still check it out, but it's kind of a ghost town now <laughs> in those moots. Um, and if you ask me a question, you're, you're not likely to get anyone there to hear you and answer. I want to take a few minutes just to show you some uh, some shots from the the class, and then if you have questions to answer them, I'm really uh, I'm notorious for not leaving time at the end for questions because I like to talk too much. It's very bad. Um, so I, I would like to leave some time for questions. I will drop the course link in here one more time before I forget. Um, you can also find us easily on WizIQ. But if you want to know more about the course, you'll see that on the course page. And this is a shot of me in the opening ceremony. This is, well, who is this? Can you guess? Does anybody know this person? <laughs> Super Shelly. <laughs> so she did um, the similar or, or maybe exactly the same uh, presentation she did with Nelly uh, in our MOOC, and it was great. And there's Ross and with Roscoe the dog. Great, Brian. I don't know if you know Nick Peachy. If you're in English language teaching world, then you certainly know who he is. And if you're in the ed tech world, but not English language teaching, you might know who he is too. And he has, we've only had three so far. In, well, with mine, it's four. Here's number four. Do you know this person? She also presented in Moodle MOOC 2014. Her name is Vicki Hollett, yes. She did a really cool, uh, well, same thing she did here. And we had some trouble with the media player, but not as much. <laughs> but still, we had trouble too. But helping teachers learn about how to teach, uh, create videos for their teachers. Uh, I want to give a shout out to the WizIQ marketing team. They've been doing uh, promotions, uh, these creatives for uh, Nelly's book and for my book. That's Shelly. I've done a couple of interviews. I'm going to uh, interview a few more people, I hope to. This is Mark Barnes. If he's actually uh, uh, doing his, uh, his uh, session in July. But I had a chance to interview him. He is a fascinating, fascinating person. Um, and if you don't know about him, I strongly, let me get the link to this interview. I strongly recommend checking him out. If you want to listen to the interview with me and him, that's great. But more important, here's the interview, is linking to his stuff. He's written many books uh, about uh, two subjects in particular that are very interesting to me. Uh, mobile learning and student-centered learning and how they connect especially and he does a lot talking about assessment in uh, both physical classrooms and virtual classrooms. Uh, he's an amazing person, Mark Barnes. You definitely want to check him out if you're interested in the future of education. And there's another creative does anybody know this guy, Jack? Jack Askew? I'm going to ask you if you know Jack Askew. Jack, incidentally, is presenting today. So if you join uh, TTO, you'll see Jack, uh, or you'll have the chance to see Jack live, or maybe you'll watch the recording later on. Jack is doing a session on uh, a topic that is super important. And actually, uh, Heike is doing one tomorrow, too, on a similar topic. How to find students. If you're an online teacher, how do you find and keep students? I know I'm competing with the World Cup. I mean, come on. When, 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 when am I not competing with the World Cup? <laughs> hey, you can record those games, too. No, if I were you and you really want to watch the World Cup, you go ahead and watch it, and you watch the recording later. I love having a big class with live students, but I do not want people to stress especially in the future, it's going to be asynchronous, 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 right? We're not going to be, how are we going to satisfy everybody's time zone, right? It's just not going to happen that way. 
So I see a lot more asynchronous with interact, interactive uh, uh, options uh, while you're watching asynchronously. Right now, it's not too interactive. You can go to links in the recordings, and you can you know control the media player a bit. But anyway, um, favorite because it's myself. No, <laughs> I like this one actually the most uh, because. It doesn't. It doesn't say teachers teaching online. Actually, I thought it even put it on here. So this one really, uh, it, you know, it has all the ideas of the fun, and we the online teachers. I don't know when they came up with that. I think that was uh, Chetan is doing all these uh, uh, great creators. Uh, but yeah, really like that. So. That's it for my presentation. I have time to take some questions. Um, I do uh, lend you that in WizIQ, there's so much we can do. And uh, also, uh, TTO teachers. I haven't uh, said this so explicitly, but I will be uh, talking more and more about how I can help you the way Nelly does too. Learn about the platform, get your courses up on the platform. So there's a lot going to be opportunity there, and I will be referring uh, participants in the MOOC to uh, Nelly's classes especially, and others who are doing great work uh, to uh, work as evangelists for the platform and, and really try to get teachers up there and understanding it. And a lot of great stuff uh, has been added recently to the platform. And it's, it's easy to use, easier than before, but may, because it's unfamiliar, you may need, may need help with that. So, uh, I usually go over time, and this time I've got time for questions. <laughs> so thank you for the claps and the stars, but I'm not leaving. Unless you absolutely want to leave. I'd love to, and actually, Nelly, you're welcome to come on with me. I talked fast today. Oh, yeah, I can... I Too slow? Uh, <laughs> and remote English, I remember you, you said something, you made a comment about, uh, about the, where, where I'm living, which I, is not my apartment, it's actually, um, it's actually our, my, we're very fortunate to be staying here this year, um, and it is a great place. Thank you, Virginia. I'm glad you enjoyed the presentation. And I'm glad to, to see that Dr. Nelly will put it up on YouTube. That's cool. It is very swish, yes, indeed. <laughs> not exactly, Tom. It's a long story. But no, it's not quite, quite like that. I wish. <laughs> that would certainly come in handy right now. <laughs> oh! Dr. Nelly wants you to ask me a question. Said, did I marry in the money? No, but really, any questions about designing MOOCs or questions you have about how MOOCs work? I know I'm kind of preaching to the choir here, uh, and you're already uh, in the Moodle MOOC, and Nelly has so many great answers for you. How long have you been engaged in WizIQ? Uh, Kirsten, I've been teaching in WizIQ. I started with Dr. Nelly in a class uh, that she co-produced with me called the Weekly Workout with WizIQ. And that was um, winter a couple years ago. And then about a year and a half ago, I started, well, see, this is where the question can't sit because I'm answering one. So maybe you can re-ask them, or I can go up on the, the chat box. If you don't mind asking again, I'll finish this one quickly because I talk too much. Quick answer is uh, about, about two and a half years. How do I get the word out about the courses? Well, I'm fortunate in that I'm working, my main job, almost a full-time job, is with WizIQ. So they do a lot to promote what I'm doing because it doesn't just promote me. I'm not getting paid from those courses directly. I'm getting paid for what I'm doing on the platform. So I have a lot of help from, um, from WizIQ, but I also am very engaged on Facebook and Twitter, especially Facebook. And if you want to follow me on Facebook, I'll just put that in here. It's Fluency MC. If you put that into Facebook, Twitter, um, or just into Google, you'll find all my stuff. 
Somebody had another question about marketing, I believe, or another question about designing MOOCs. I'm not sure. If you could put it in again. Sorry, I missed it. Or a new question, if you have a new question. Well, everybody's typing. It's going to be that onslaught. But I'll try. I'll try to. How do you come up with a design for a MOOC? Like the topic. How long should a MOOC run with activities? Great. I'm going to remember these. Let me do those first. I mean, I think a MOOC. I, this is still kind of the wild, wild west, right? We're still trying to figure it out and see how, what, how, what works and what doesn't. But I like the idea of a month, um, and I like the idea of you know several classes a week. But as you can see, I really like the idea of people being able to do it at their own pace and continue it as long as they like, come in and do it with the recordings when they like. As far as the topic, this one was an easy one for me because I really, especially working with WizIQ, really need to find and help more teachers get on a platform like WizIQ where they can have more success marketing their courses and getting paid for those courses. <laughs> so I really, uh, you know, it was very easy to decide to do a MOOC like this because the English language teaching MOOC was just for English language teachers, which is a big group, but I really wanted something that was, as I said before, more inclusive of uh, teachers who are interested in any online teaching. And the, incidentally, the English language teaching MOOC was not about online teaching. It was using the platform uh, to be able to help your teaching. This course is really about teaching online. I saw one question about um, how do you get started on WizIQ, and you know, this is what, you know, the MOOC is really about how to get started teaching online, but of course, uh, as an ambassador and knowledge entertainer at WizIQ, I'm also hoping I can help you get on WizIQ and you'll have my support. Um, working with uh, working with the uh, what we call LMP, the Learning Marketplace at WizIQ, is a great team of people who are really uh, dedicated to helping teachers now get courses in WizIQ, get paid for them, uh, helping to market them. So uh, yeah, Nelly, Nelly really has the best stuff about how to use the platform, uh, where I can help. Um, it's not something Nelly doesn't do. Nelly does everything in WizIQ. Um, but specifically, I can help you uh, in thinking about how to market yourself, how to design your course uh, to get it up, and connect more closely with the team members there on that because I'm doing this on a constantly as my job. I'm glad you like the moves. Oh, there's Pablo. Is that Pablo of Poodle fame? I missed the live, the live class. Yeah, it was like Houston in 2007. Wow, that's fantastic. Greetings, Pablo. Any other questions? Maria's been here since 2011. Okay. A question that you can address? Okay. Uh, the PowerPoint, yes, absolutely. Nelly's already uploaded it to uh, the courseware. So it's there for you. How do you find and choose the presenters? That's, and yes, and Derek said the link earlier. That's a great question. Um, for the ELT MOOCs, English language teaching MOOCs, um, that was uh, you know, very easy for me because this is my field. And I was looking for teachers, uh, as I said, who are not necessarily teachers who teach online, um, but just people in the field of English language training that had great tips, suggestions, advice to build skills uh, to help our teachers who are looking for CPD, continuing professional development in English language teaching, to build their skills. For this one, uh, it's a little trickier because I wanted people who are not just English language teachers, and I wanted people who have a lot of experience teaching online, and most importantly, I want those people to be successful at what they do online in the sense that they are known for engaging students and for you know, really working uh, to reach 
people all over the world doing great stuff in the field. So, you know, you can find online teachers who are kind of dry, um, not so great at what they do. Uh, and some of them might be successful, but in a way that, at least to me, doesn't appeal to me. So, um, luckily, luckily, there's the idea of this MOOC, and maybe the way I presented it, uh, I was able to get some good people. It is still heavy, heavy on the English language teaching side, but the English language teachers who are there are very into online teaching and ed tech, so they're going to, uh, they've already started uh, to present what they're doing, uh, not focusing on the subject matter. And we do have several people outside of language teaching, uh, I mean, we have a bunch, but we have several who are very well known in their field. So one of them is, uh, as I mentioned before, Mark Barnes, and our big VIP, I'm going to put his name in here, see if anybody knows this guy. If you don't know Rich Kiker and you Google him, it's pretty funny to Google Rich Kiker because Rich Kiker is the top rated Google trainer in the world. Super young guy, definitely younger than me, maybe a lot younger than me. Um, and he is top rated Google trainer in the world by teachers, like by his trainees. He's a really amazing person. He is going to give, I think, the name of his, uh, on the 23rd, next week, his uh, presentation is called Google for Productivity in Online Learning. <laughs> so he is going to be doing a Google, uh, Google for Education, and, you know, Google has been doing really great stuff for educators for a while now, but lately, my goodness, they are doing tons of new stuff for teachers. So that should be a very interesting session. And I'll take a moment to say goodbye to Nelly too. Have a good time. No need to extend the session. I'm telling you, I'm getting, I think I'm getting better at not 